Hello, and welcome to this February 2016 edition of Behavioral Health Today. I'm Lakeisha Bennett. We begin with a premier training event that focuses on the core issues facing the mental health and addictions field. The 37th Annual Training Institute on Behavioral Health and Addictive Disorders takes place in Clearwater Beach, Florida this month. Now, this conference promises to present an exceptional combination of inspiring speakers and trainers who will address today's most relevant topics. One of those nationally recognized speakers is Doug McGurk, Vice President of Training and Development at Palm Healthcare Company. He tells us what sets this event apart. The thing with uh, U.S. Journal is that they have the, the content right there and you can meet with some of the authors and be able to dig in a little deeper and get their books and be able to take that home with you as well. And it's important that people don't become the the conference sort of junkie, meaning, you know, they go to every conference, but they don't necessarily have the opportunity to apply or really take the stuff home. And the U.S. Journal stuff has real take homes. You could actually come home with a book. Doug's presentation is entitled Rules and Values, Essential Elements of the Blueprint of Success. He explains why providers should attend this session. It's uh, interactive. I, we usually create an, an environment where someone can experience this and that you're, you're doing the work where I'm not just up there sitting and telling stories and running a PowerPoint with all sorts of data on there. It's, it's more about an experience and that's applicable. Uh, so for those, you could ask people who have attended the trainings that I've done with U.S. Journal that they're at the very least um, engaging and, and the participants have an opportunity to learn something that is easily uh, applied and you could take action on immediately. Dr. Vicki Burkis, the medical services advisor with Bermuda Ranch, will also be in attendance. She's speaking about eating disorders, separating the person from the disease. As Dr. Burkis explains, it's important for providers who don't specialize in eating disorders to attend. People are going to come into your office as a provider if you're not specializing in this, and even if you are, and start talking about their eating disorder. They may talk about lack of sleep. They may talk about fatigue. They may talk about uh, weight loss or weight gain. But very few will walk into someone who's specializing in addiction medicine and say, hi, I'm so-and-so and I'm bulimic. So there are various things that, that I think providers need to understand about why someone finally decides to ask for help. And if I can make that readily available, to uh, addiction specialists and let them know that, okay, if you're willing to ask these questions and you do find out your patient has an eating disorder and you don't feel comfortable treating it, what's your next step? And I plan to go into the levels of treatment and how to get someone engaged in treatment and just how can they approach the patient to keep the conversation going. And attorney Jeffrey Lynn with the firm Weiner, Lynn and Thompson will take part in the panel discussion, distinguishing quality client-centric providers and how that may play into payer behaviors in Florida's ground central and the world. The, the first part of the, of the topic, distinguishing quality client-centric providers, is starting to help educate the consumer uh, out there that treatment is one thing. And recovery support services is something completely different. Mm -hmm. So no differently than you may go to a hospital for surgery for your shoulder, and you may go to a rehab after that to rehab your shoulder. Even though the same issue is your shoulder, you're dealing with, with two different ways. One was acute surgery, and one is long-term recovery. The upcoming discussion that John Lehman, Mark Fontaine, and I are going to have with the, as a panel is how do, you, how do we start distinguishing treatment services from recovery support services, and where, you know, where should everyone, as we say, stay in their own lane? Where do they cross over? Where, where do they rightfully cross over? Where do they wrongfully cross over? You, know, you could be a jack of all trades, master of none. Is that good or is that bad? Even if, and, and then the second part of the discussion is and how that may pay into payer behaviors. As of today, peers are not paying for housing. And I think that that's a travesty. I, I think that that's like saying, I'll pay for your surgery, but I'm not paying for your, your hospital. Your hospital stay. Stay, yeah. 
Well, where do you want me to go? Right, right. So this is the mentality that we need to start shifting is that if we can demonstrate to insurance companies that the, the episodic care of treatment may cost you X, and it's actually if you pay for recovery support services, including recovery housing, not just housing, but a true licensed acknowledged regulated recovery residents where they are implementing evidence-based social model way of living, that the relapse rate is going to go down. The conference takes place from February 22nd through the 25th at the Hilton Clearwater Beach Resort Hotel. Now this conference is presented by U.S. Journal Training Incorporated and the Institute for Integral Development. For more information or to register, go to usjt.com. Join the movement and run the race. It's the fourth annual Heroes 6K Run Walk South Florida. This amazing event is designed to shine a spotlight on the everyday heroes in recovery and those seeking sobriety from substance or mental health issues. And we have a new charity beneficiary this year, YPR, or Young People in Recovery. The race takes place on Saturday, June 4th, 7 a.m. at a new and bigger location, Hyzinga Plaza in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And we know the race is months away, but now is the time to get in on the early bird savings. Our goal this year is to get 1,000 people there. So tell your friends, your colleagues, and your family. If you want to sign up, just go to heroes6k.com. Finally, our industry spotlight focuses on transferring, transforming, and transcending. Redwood Recovery Solutions has gone from modest beginnings generating leads in the auto industry to focusing on individual care and stepping into the forefront of lead generation for addiction treatment. The Redwood Recovery Solutions family of brands includes TreatmentCalls.com and 1-800-ADDICTS. Now, currently in the behavioral health industry, there's a fine line between call center marketing and patient brokering. CEO Jason Bryan talks about how his company stays within the ethical line. There are lots of um, practices that are currently in the space that, that are not ethical or legal. Um, what we've done and what we decided to do is, is a couple of things. One, we um, got legal opinions around our practices to make sure that we fall within the, the guidelines, make sure that everything that we're doing is, is legal. Mm -hmm. um, we've also formed an advisory board from the ethics perspective to make sure that what we're doing is ethical. And then we went one step further after we went out and got legal opinions surrounding what we're doing. We also hired an in-house uh, attorney um, that serves as our in-house legal counsel to make sure that on a day-to-day -day basis we are um, following the letter of the law and of course making sure that we are doing things the right way. So we take it very seriously that we, um, we do it the right way. You can learn more about Redwood Recovery Solutions by contacting its family of brands, the website treatmentcalls.com or by calling 1-800-ADDICTS. That's all for this edition of Behavioral Health Today. We hope you've been enlightened and we thank you for watching. I'm Lakeisha Bennett.